team is as the doctor. We work very closely together with the critical care paramedics. We do work as a team and our, our roles are um, different but very important that we work together. So one of the things about being a doctor is that we're allowed to give far more drugs than uh, paramedics. Critical, pair, critical care paramedics are allowed to give more drugs than um, standard paramedics, but obviously as doctors we're allowed to give um, significantly more drugs, in particular to give anaesthetic drugs and powerful sedation and pain-killing drugs. So from my perspective, when we get to call, the important thing is to get on board the helicopter as soon as we're scrambled, um, strap myself in, and it's my job, I sit in the back, to operate the communications and to talk to the uh, critical care desk who task us and make sure that everybody knows what's happening. On the way to a job, we'll also discuss what we're going to do, where our nearest hospitals are, and what sort of roles each of us is going to play. When we arrive on scene and get out of the helicopter, we carry the bags to the scene and I will usually make first contact with the patient or their relative or the other crews on scene to establish exactly what's happening. I will then assess the patient, either taking a history and examining the patient, and then together with the paramedic we'll decide on a plan where we're going to go, what we're going to do or what interventions we need to perform on scene. For the most critically ill and injured patients, one of the important things that we do is to give them an anaesthetic and uh, insert a breathing tube into their throat so that we can ventilate them on the way to hospital. This means that the patient will be put asleep with powerful anaesthetic drugs and then kept asleep in transit. The paramedic has a really important role in making sure that they get all the equipment ready and that they pass the equipment in the right order and uh, ensure that the doctor stays calm at all times. So it's really important that we work as a team on this and the paramedic is advising the doctor. Once we get to hospital, we will then hand over the patient to the receiving team and make sure that they have all the relevant information. I'm afraid my other job is also to do the paperwork when we arrive at hospital. When we get back to base, we have a, more paperwork to fill out and we make sure that we collect details of all our patients on a database so that we can follow them up and make sure that things are progressing well and that we learn um, from any incidents or problems that we've had at the time. One of the questions I often get asked is why we wear such glamorous outfits and there are two reasons really. One is bright orange and high visibility is very important when we're on scene, especially in the dark or when we're working somewhere like a railway line. So that's one of the important features. The other one is that we've got lots and lots of pockets in here so I'm able to carry all sorts of things so one of the things that as a doctor I carry is I carry the drugs that we draw up every day so for instance this is ketamine this is an anaesthetic drug and because it's drawn up and ready if we need if a patient is really badly ill or injured and we need to give them an anaesthetic very quickly I don't need to spend time drawing up the drugs so we carry ketamine which is an anaesthetic I carry fentanyl which is a very powerful um, anaesthetic painkiller I carry um, flush, so that's to make sure the cannula doesn't clog up with blood. We carry midazolam, which is a sedative. And finally, we also carry some stuff called rocuronium. And what rocuronium does is that paralyzes the muscles. So if we need to get a breathing tube down the patient, the patient isn't swallowing or coughing while we're doing that. So all those are ready, drawn up and good to go if we need to give them in a hurry. So that really does help us save time on seeing when we're dealing with the most critically ill and injured patients. So other stuff we carry about our person, and um, we have something that we can write on. So we um, can do a little heart to write on. <laughs> Um, but usually we have the consultant, I have the consultant of the day and our next mission number on there but we can write down any important details about the job or the patient on here. Also in here we carry um, flight board documents. So in here today I've got um, some little crib sheets which tell you um, about the different drug doses and equipment to use for different aged children. So starting from really small babies, less than one month, goes all the way up through the ages um, until the age of 12. So very useful little crib sheets about children and carry some other stuff in, in the flight board as well. In this pocket down here I carry um, all the stuff I might need to um, put a drip into somebody. So. Um, needles I'm afraid, uh, uh, things to clean the skin with, things to take it in with and I also carry um, scalpel and various other implements which if we need to um, cut a hole in somebody's chest for instance we can do that very quickly. And we, we have proper kit in the bags but, but I just carry spares in there. In this pocket I've got, very important for doctors, a stethoscope 
and um, I also carry what's called a cat tourniquet and what this is used for if you're bleeding very quickly and very heavily um, this can be applied incredibly rapidly um, to an arm or a leg to stop um, catastrophic hemorrhage so always helpful to have one of these um, very close by and readily available and in fact I did need one um, not long ago I did use one the other day so um, so always helpful to have that in the pocket and of course we always have various gloves um, to keep everything clean so that's what I carry in my pockets. So one of the pieces of kit that we use for every patient is our monitor. This is our current uh, monitor. This has two functions. One, it's to monitor patients' important um, vital signs, so their heart rate, blood pressure, um, how much oxygen they've got going around in their blood, how fast they're breathing. Uh, and the other function is as, as a defibrillator. So if your heart has stopped and you need an electric shock, this machine will also do that. Um, and it will do that for a range of patients, ranging from very small children, obviously up to adults. So this is a very um, flexible machine, really. It will take um, blood pressure. It will measure um, oxygen saturation, which I might be able to get it to do, um, which is how much oxygen I've got going around in my bloodstream. And it will also measure my heart rate doing that. There you go. So my heart rate is 83. That's the green number on the screen. And the amount of oxygen I've got in my blood is 100% saturated, so um, you can tell I don't smoke. The other thing it will do is it will do an ECG, so we can tell if the patient's um, having a heart attack or any problems with their heart at all. So very flexible, very quick to apply, and we'll put this on almost every patient. So really useful. Um, and as you can see, it's a lovely display, nice and brightly co coloured, very easy to see. Even when we're night flying, um, these numbers and this display is really easy to see um, from quite a way away. So uh, we can tell very quickly whether the patient is doing okay or not. Also easy to see in the back of the aircraft. So um, when we're flying along, we can still continue to monitor the patient and make sure everything is fine. Hi, I'm uh, Steve Norris. I'm one of the pilots who flies the East Anglia Air Ambulance. I've been flying for about 22 years now. I started in the British Army. I've been flying for the Air Ambulance for the last seven years out of Norwich. When we get a job, it comes into the office first of all on the red phone. Once that goes, we all get together as a team. As soon as we find out where we're going to, I'll come out to the helicopter, start it up and wait for the doctor and paramedic to come out to me. It normally takes about three to four minutes to get off the ground and going out on the job. Uh, once we're actually on the job, I'll obviously get into the scene, land as close as I can to the patient. Uh, once they're in back from the helicopter, I'll close the helicopter down and then provide security for the helicopter if it needs it, uh, but I'll do carry bags and things around for the medical team if I need to. Obviously once we've sorted out the patient, we'll load them onto the helicopter and then my job is to go to the A&E a &E that they've selected as fast as we can to get the patient into A&E. One of the reasons I enjoy doing the job of an air ambulance pilot is that we do get to land in places that you wouldn't normally land, um, you know, particularly in towns, woods and things which are quite confined areas. Uh, we do get a lot of extra training so we can do this. Uh, plus the training that we had in the army helps towards this as well so the majority of air ambulance pilots tend to be ex-military not all of them though particularly enjoy flying the 135 it is a nice compact helicopter but it's got quite a big interior for the size of the helicopter uh, and we can land this in something which is 25 meters square or about the size of a tennis court um, we land in cities and towns all the time um, land on the side of the road in woods on the beach uh, so it is a good varied job and we do get to shoot around all over the place. I'm based at Norwich at the airport um, and our main coverage area for this helicopter is Norfolk and Suffolk. However we are controlled centrally from Chelmsford uh, who control five air ambulance helicopters in the region. Um, so we actually cover from the North Norfolk coast and I have done jobs inside the M25 before. If the Essex helicopter or the Hearts helicopters are out on a job we will cover for them. And again they'll come up to Norfolk and cover for us if need be. With the air ambulance I've flown three types of helicopter, actually, four types, sorry, as air ambulance. I've flown a twin squirrel, a BO105, a BK117, and this, which is the EC135. Um, the two good helicopters are the BK117 and the EC135. Uh, the BO105 and the 355 are both nice helicopters, but they are a bit small for air ambulance work. We're now here at the Cambridge base where we operate uh, a hem service at night. We've been doing this since May last year. We have additional equipment fitted to the helicopter that allows us to do this. We use night vision goggles, the tracker searchlight, and we also have additional mapping on our GPS system with power lines overlaid on top of it. 
We also have a power line detection system. Flying at night means that we're able to reach approximately a third more patients and we carry this out with the medical team up until 1.30 in the morning. Hello, my name is Rod Wells uh, with uh, East Anglia Air Ambulance. Fortunately enough, I've been with them for well, nearly 10 years now. Uh, Part-time, initially uh, doing the odd shifts, or about two or three shifts a month, and now sort of been on uh, for two years as full-time critical care paramedic, HEMS trained. As part of my role, I, I obviously not just to be in the aircraft and look after patients, I need to get the pilot there first. So there's a little bit of uh, working out between the two of us and doing navigation. Um, obviously it's not so bad uh, during the daytime, at night time we uh, obviously have to sit down and plan the job before we actually fly throughout the night. Uh, and obviously once we get there, it's a landing, sort of landing zones, and going with the doctor to, uh, to look after the patient. Um, it's taken some time to get fully trained, uh, it does all of us, uh, because we have additional skills up and above the uh, ordinary paramedic. Otherwise, we will be, we are proper paramedics, but um, we have, as I say, additional skills, uh, pain relief, uh, sedatory skills, uh, and advanced airway skills also that we bring to scene and bring to the patient. As part of my role as a critical care paramedic, uh, my other tasks are to go into the local control room and monitor all the trouble nine calls that came in. So we filter all the 999 calls that come in just to see which is the most critical really and to see what, what needs they may have, whether it be a critical care paramedic on the ground or a critical care paramedic as part of the uh, uh, hospital or, or doctor team on the aircraft here. Uh, I tend to do that uh, about three, four times a month uh, within my role. As being a critical care paramedic, it's uh, very challenging. I've been with the ambulance service for 25 years, and as I said, been on, on the aircraft off and on now for 10 years. Uh, it's more challenging in the fact that we go to the higher acuity uh, calls, really, uh, a, a lot of critically injured or ill people, as opposed to being uh, on, on the road where they have a big wide spectrum of calls. Uh, it's certainly challenging every patient lots of education as well. If you could see, basically the aircraft is really quite full now. Uh, this is the stretch that the patient lay on and obviously uh, we have three big bags on there at the moment, um, which is a, a packaging bag from the very bottom to the uh, monitor medical bag, if you like, which is full of the medical bits and pieces that we attend to and medical drugs uh, and spares also. Um, and then we obviously always carry to scene as our trauma bag, uh, which is the top blue one here. So uh, yet again, it's got uh, medical drugs, uh, drugs we use for trauma, fluids, uh, and, and everything we need really for the scene. So when we arrive on scene, we'll take uh, our monitor, um, uh, and certainly the medical bag, and certainly the trauma bag, just to scene and suction. Um, within the aircraft also we have uh, three cylinders of oxygen and uh, two ventilators. One ventilator we tend to leave here for the patient coming in uh, and the other ventilator is what we take to see which is a small, small uh, mobile device. Um, we also carry an auxiliary box which is full of all spare equipment. Uh, life jackets from when working around the water and obviously personal protective equipment such as helmets and gloves uh, and, and uh, fluorescent jackets. Most, uh, most of our calls uh, originally were, were for tra uh, road traffic accidents and, and I think over the last couple of years we've seen that changed to probably cardiac arrests is, is our main focus of calls. Uh, secondly by uh, road traffic accidents and then equestrian accidents. Um, I believe we've changed and moved over the last two, two, three years uh, and I think this is because we've got our own designated control area now and, and we're looking at the cardiac arrests that come in and, and, and we believe that we can offer a little bit more. Uh, so, so 
we send the team along I mean obviously the ambulance service will be there doing a great job as well and we're just coming along just to see whether we can actually help them uh, we have a little bit more equipment a little bit different drugs um, a proven device for cardiac arrest which is an ACD and and two or three different more drugs that we can probably come along and offer some help and um, and, and hopefully get a better outcome